Hello everybody, welcome to another one of my EV ramblings. This is my wife Amanda and we're actually going to be driving out to Port Renfrew to just spend a night and a year ago I did a comparison of the second generation Volt to my 2011 Volt to see the range difference and I achieved 66 kilometers. Now it is early January or mid-January, the temperature is about 7 degrees Celsius, it's uh, sunny and rain and high winds and I want to see what the difference is, uh, they capture it on video, of the range in these type of conditions with the heat on, with the windshield wipers going. Right now I'm only showing a maximum of 39 kilometers. So we're going to drive out there and uh, see what it gets. So as I've explained on a few videos, I do mostly around this time of year just do really short trips and I think that what contribute to the really low number displaying here and this is just the 39 kilometers is just based on kind of your history what you've done recently so it, you can get way beyond that or you can get a lot less depending on how you drive. I suspect though that we probably will get somewhere around 39-40 kilometers and I've also kind of uh, suspected that the car may be losing battery capacity. So once we've uh, once I finish this video and we've come back from our little trip to Port Renfrew, I'm going to plug the car into a little meter that I have and see how much energy it uses to charge. And that should give me a good indication if the battery has lost a lot of capacity because it should uh, hold at least 10 kilowatt hours. So this will be a long drive, so I'm going to take a few breaks and uh, be back soon. Okay, we're back and we have, we're basically at the halfway point on the range itself. When we left it was showing at 39 kilometers being available, but uh, we've only driven 11.5 and now we're down to 20 kilometers of range. So obviously already we're seeing a huge drop. And if we look at things like the climate, the climate's using about 31%. I do have the stereo on, that should be minimal as well. Uh, we did make one quick stop to a grocery store and you know the cycling, turning the car on, off and then on again and uh, obviously doing that heat again can reduce it a bit more. But I'm hoping that when we get, we've been driving through city traffic, when we get into the more free flowing traffic that our numbers will go way up and we'll get the range that at least was recommended that we get. When the second gen leaf um, becomes more available, mm -hmm. we should go take one for a test drive and let you drive it. I'd sure. like to record to see what you yeah. think of it compared to. I'll, I'll notice things. Yeah. It's the exact same platform. The car. So, second gen leaf would be from what year? 2018 and on. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's totally styled differently. The currently but, new one. Yeah. Okay. That'd be good. Yeah. Style different, but it's the uh, same frame and everything. Hmm. It's made it look a lot better. Mm -hmm. Actually, lots of things different. Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting to see how you react to their, they introduced one pedal driving so it does like full stop. Like it's like the i3 but stronger. Okay. okay. You can turn that off. Oh good. <laughs> Really all the i3 would have needed for me to, to really like it yeah. is the option to turn that regen off is too much for me. Yeah. I do have concerns about the longevity of this car. Mm -hmm. It is a first generation. Yeah. Like it's, it's just, a new invention basically. Yeah. I really like the car, but it would just suck if like the gas stuff starts Stop working. Starts, yeah, screwing up. Yeah. You never know. But it's not like a. It's not like a traditional car, though. I mean, it'd be breaking down by now. Yeah. If it was. Especially if you only got the oil changed once every two years. Yeah. <laughs> it would be breaking down on it. 
All right, so we got onto the really flowy part of the road and we've seen our mileage go up, get considerably better. We've driven almost 29 kilometers and we have 11 listed. So if we were able to get that, that put us at about 40 kilometers right now, which would be above the estimated range you gave us, which is good. So that just goes to show you the type of driving you're doing is crucial in like how far you get with the electric vehicle. But still really shy of what we were getting in like the late summertime when we got 66 kilometers. And you've had it in D this whole time, not L? Yeah, I've had, it, I, I've had it in drive for the most part, mostly because L makes your stomach <laughs> upset. Yes. But <laughs> but I have used L a little bit. But I find whenever I'm driving on this particular stretch, that's where we get our most economy, I always have it in drive. Uh, just because it's, I don't want to slow down, I want to use mm -hmm. momentum, and we're mostly going downhill. Mm -hmm. I can handle it in L if we're going straight on, along a smooth right. road. Just in town if you have it in L. It just uh, makes me nauseous. <laughs> but no, if we're going downhills and it's just smooth, that's fine. Yeah. Fine L. Yeah, I'd rather have it in drive though. I think it's more efficient. Mm -hmm. I should probably do a video like that actually, where I mm -hmm. drive the same route same in route. L and then that same day charge the car fully and then drive it in, in D mode yeah. and see how far you more, get. Um, more hilly too. Yeah. You could go over the mountain, huh? Yeah. Maybe. That's a good video idea. Coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> driving a little bit more and we're down to our last bar of energy showing on my display here. We have three kilometers now, just dropping three. And we have driven 37.4. So yeah, like we're on basically just over what it said we could get, which is pretty good. Uh, now this car from the factory was listed as supposed to get 35 miles which I'm not entirely sure what that is. So I, I'm not gonna just change it here. I'll look it up. Oh, I'm changing it. it. Yeah. For all my American viewers. So we've gone 23.6 miles um, and with two miles remaining. So that is significantly less than the 35 miles that was that the car was sold at, under. But once again, we are cold for temperature. We've had the climate control on the entire time. The windshield wipers have been going. So it's something that I would expect to see. Switch it back to metric, because that's what I like. So the road signs are marked in. Yep. Oh, there's no cell signal here. Yeah, it's pretty spotty oh, out here. Oh, there it is.
surprised we caught up. Like, based on what we got, like, almost right out of the gate. We dropped so much. A lot of that could be heating up the, just heating up the heater in the cabin of the car. I'm going to put in an L because that person's going to slow down. Predictive driving is really important in an electric vehicle to make sure you're looking ahead and anticipating if you can keep the car rolling or slow down a little bit to maintain your, your momentum. But it's more important anyways in like a first generation car where your range is limited. That sort of driving can benefit gas cars too, is that right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's called a uh, hypermiling, I think. Mm -hmm. Where you yeah, you try to just develop those techniques where you uh, you absolutely try not to stop, like just keep momentum going. Mm -hmm. Stopping and starting is like your hardest thing with the vehicles, just getting that momentum back up. So you see big trucks doing that too. Mm -hmm. With the rolling stops and lights. Yeah. And I think it's also easier on the like brakes and things mm -hmm. like that, just to play like, over a longer period of time and less pressure. Mm -hmm. And then we've driven 1.3 or 4. Okay, we're showing 1 kilometer still, but my bar has disappeared from the, the display, so we're uh, very close. And this car in front of me is going to be turning right. I really don't want to lose my momentum. Okay. I'm going to try to ease on the accelerator right now. Ever so slightly. Yeah, we're showing zero, but we still haven't switched on to the gas. Oh, there okay, goes. there we go. So we did 42.1 kilometers compared to an estimated 39. And when I went late summer a year ago, I got 66 kilometers. So that is roughly 35 percent difference, which is interesting because our climate control shows us using about 31 percent. And then when you add the windshield wipers in there, and uh, well, plus you're in the car now, yeah. and we have luggage and things like that, so that all adds additional weight to the car. Plus my my gas tank is mostly full, three quarters full, where I think it was a lot lower yeah. when I did the trip before, and so that's additional weight. So. I'm actually kind of surprised. I think, like, that's, I didn't know how accurate that was, mm -hmm. that percentage, it's but I think the math works out. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so I guess, like, if we were, if this was freezing temperatures or below freezing, uh, we would obviously see a much bigger uh, reduction. And if I put this in, like, comfort mode, I can get up to, like, 50 or 60% of my battery uses just for heat. And heat is a lot more, energy expensive than air conditioning so you don't see this kind of loss in the summer when you have the AC on. So when you did this trip in the summer video mm -hmm. did you have the air conditioning on? Or no did? I just had, just it, had off it off entirely. Just to get a baseline. Yeah and that's I did that with the second gen Bolt too and I actually I found I had to open the windows a couple times because mm -hmm. I got too hot. Yeah. Uh, but I, I was concerned with the windows opening with having yeah. the, the drag. All right well that's that's basically what this video is. It was a comparison. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you like what you see. And thanks, thanks, Amanda. <laughs> I and, subscribe. And I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try to get you in more of my videos. Specifically, I would also like to have you drive the Leaf. Yeah. And I could be a passenger in it, and I don't know, take note of a few things. The Leaf that you've seen Dustin driving is my daily driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it does it very well. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm gonna, well, lots more videos to come. I'm gonna be trying to do the, well, I said monthly updates before. I might try to make it bi-weekly or weekly. We'll see. And if you have any questions, ask them. I'll address them in my, uh, those videos that I'm gonna do, those update videos. So, thanks again. Take it easy. Bye.